A system developed by Danish engineer Jan Homa is being tested today. The system is being deployed to prevent one of the biggest environmental hazards of our time, the spread of alien species underwater. There has been algae found in the area and it may result in shellfish poisoning. Is the system capable of killing all the microorganisms in this test? If so, there is a possibility that it will be used on all ships around the world to prevent the further spread of the alien species. Everyone said it could not be done. Det er jo ikke alle gode idéer, der bliver gennemført til succes. Det gælder om næste morgen, når du har mødt problemer dagen i forvejen, at du vågner op og siger, vil du hvad, det kan vi godt. Og det vi har her, det er jo så den prøve, som vi har taget med til, til Hørtholm og hvor vi har taget en mikrofon. Altså, udbart kan vi ikke se, se nogen leve til. Nogle gange har vi set, at man, man kan se noget, der svømmer rundt. Og når vi lidt senere tømmer kontrol, vil man rent faktisk kunne se, at der er, der er ting, der svømmer rundt i vandet. Øh, men der er en masse små sorte flug og så videre. Det kunne meget vel være, at være dyr, som Jan han har, øh, har haft meget hældig behandling overfor. Når de er blevet varmet op og har ligget og gispet efter vandet op i tang. Det kan få det ud. If the test shows no sign of microorganisms, Yen Homa will be much closer to getting approval for his system. The one requirement for the specific test is that there must not be more than 10 living microorganisms per cubic meter in the concentrated test. Homa must remain patient until the final result is revealed. Today, it costs more than $1 billion dollars per year to clean invasive mussels out of all the cool water filters in American power plants. Tourism will come to an end because the beaches will be covered in all kinds of debris. The cost of invasive species to the EU is about 30 million euros annually. 20 to 30 years ago in the Mediterranean, only two or three invasive species were found every month. Today, that number is eight to 10 every month, so this is a fast-growing problem. This has led the UN International Maritime Organization to claim that this has got to come to an end. If you stand up here, and look over the sea, it looks so nice and calm. But below the sea surface, in every cubic meter of water, you find at least 250,000 small living creatures. It looks nice, but there is a lot of life which has to be dealt with. The spread of microorganisms occurs when a ship unloads its cargo and takes in thousands of liters of seawater and everything in the water into the ballast tanks. These tanks allow the ship to be able to lie deep enough in the water. This might take place in the La Plaza River in Argentina, where the ship then sails to the harbor in Rotterdam in the Netherlands and releases all of the ballast water and all of the thousands of microorganisms in the ballast water into the seawater. 10,000 of those living animals being pumped out will die pretty quickly. Either because the water is too salty, too fresh, too cold or too hot, but 10 of them will actually come out and find this is a nice place to be in. There's a lot of food, no enemies, and they will start multiplying in large numbers. There is evidence of smaller jellyfish from American lakes being found in the Black Sea. After their arrival, the jellyfish ate all of the food usually eaten by small fish. This led to the small fish starving and dying, which led to the demise of the large fish in the Black Sea. All of a sudden, fishing stopped and the local fishermen lost their jobs. The people taking care of the fishing boats lost their jobs and the whole economic environment in the Black Sea died. The species called sea walnut was then later introduced to Danish waters, probably not from the Black Sea, but directly from America uh, with tankers. 
We, we do know that the ballast water carry many species, and we also know that some of them may be invasive and can cause negative impacts on the marine ecosystem. One way of stopping the spread of invasive species is to kill them while they are still in the ballast tanks before they are released into a foreign sea. We are standing here on Hundestad Harbor, where we are going to establish our testing facilities of our system in a full-scale version, namely the same version which we later on will be putting on ships to kill all the microorganisms in the ballast water. In Denmark, it is now more important than ever to find a solution to the problems with ballast water. And ships carrying foreign seawater are a threat to the health of the Danish oceans. The case dealing with algae and dead garfish has drawn attention to the marine environment and interest has been focused on the effect of the outlet of ballast water. For example, foreign ballast water has introduced new crabs and mussels to Denmark. After an increase in poisonous algae, we can see the effect on other sea animals. An awful increase in planktonic algae has been seen around here. This is without a doubt an effect, like these mussels here, of ballast water transport. We are in Lullen, in the southern part of Denmark. Here, an Eastern American brackish water crab is strolling about on the ocean floor. It is settling down. Originally, it came from Murmansk through Norway, eating everything in its way. In Tasmania, alien algae are the reason why shellfish now develop a nerve poison that affects the central nervous system in humans. The poison kills within 24 hours after the shellfish is eaten. In Denmark, authorities have issued a complete fishing ban if there is a suspicion of poison in mussels. The Danish Veterinarian and Food Administration actually carries out monitoring in Danish fjords. And the, if the mussels are not healthy, you will uh, close the area and ban export. If you like to eat mussels, you should stay away from mussels caught within this triangular area in Denmark. The Danish Veterinary and Food Administration have sent out a warning. There has been algae found in the area, and it may result in shellfish poisoning. The spread of poisonous algae in the sea is not due to pollution. The poisonous algae appear once in a while, causing the fishing of mussels to be banned. The symptoms of poisoning are vomiting, diarrhea, and severe stomach pain. IMO has taken a number of of initiative uh, together with its member states, the shipping industry, as well as non-governmental -govern organizations. That's led to the development of a set of guidelines, as well as, more recently, to the adoption of an international convention on ballast water management. Within the next five to ten years, all ships must have an onboard system that ensures no invasive species are transferred from one side of the world to the other. In America alone, the government issued a law on the 1st of December 2013 that stated every ship must at least have a plan for implementing such a system. We have a very specific mechanism to uh, enact regulations for that, um, that, that legislation. And the programs that underlie that then can be very, very prescriptive and very specific about how that work needs to be done. Um, the U.S. administration have adopted even stricter regulation on ballast water, uh, regulation that uh, goes beyond the IMO convention. Therefore, we recommend ship owners in global operation to choose U.S. approved systems especially those calling U.S. ports. It's evident that when IMO are coming up with demand that all ships on this planet should have a system on board, a lot of producers of such potential system will start thinking we are going to make absolutely the best and most simple system. There's many, many systems which have been, uh, I mean, many systems approved, so about 30 which have been approved now. We have about 20 in the pipeline. So it's a quite a lot of systems, different. All of them more or less are different, so it yeah. makes a little bit complicated yeah. and difficult for the, the ship owners to make a decision. 
Another Danish company has developed a concept using a filter to remove the big debris. And then it kills off the rest with a combination of ozone and ultraviolet irradiation in the water. Nu er det altså tredje projekt, du er i gang med, ikke? og de har alle sammen taget rigtig lang tid, men jeg medgiver dig, at, 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 altså, at nogen af dem de er, er blevet til noget. De er blevet til noget alle ja. sammen. <laughs> På et eller andet tidspunkt, men det tager lang tid. The idea came to Homa about 10 to 15 years ago, when he was involved in the production of equipment to clean the inside of big tanks. The equipment consisted of a rotating jet nozzle that generated a series of jet streams that flushed and cleaned the inside of the tank. The passing cleaning liquid moved a little propeller that made the nozzle rotate in one direction while the other wheel rotated on another axis. One day, while testing the system, Homa asked one of the operators, what if we extended the pipes so that the nozzle could slide below the water surface? The operator said, but Yen, then it can't rotate. Homa told him, I think it can, but let's see what happens. Homa came back from lunch half an hour later, and they started. Immediately, Homa could see that the nozzle created a lot of turbulence in the water. Quickly, Homa contacted Professor John Vilesen from the Technical University of Denmark, who came over to have a look. Vilesen asked, have you tried pumping gas through it? When they did, they saw a beautiful environment unfolding made of small and big bubbles as they mixed the liquid with the gas. Vilesen was so amazed he had to sit on the ground. He said, this is the most beautiful thing I've seen in 30 years. The experience made Homa realize that the nozzles probably could be used for cleaning the ballast water of unwanted microorganisms. When the nitrogen is released in small bubbles into the water, the oxygen is absorbed by the bubbles. Before long, the water is emptied of oxygen and all of the organisms do what we all do when we run out of air, die. Homa realized that all of the bigger organisms in need of oxygen died, but removing all of the smaller organisms required another technology. They experimented with different systems, but in the end, they decided that it would be a good idea to make use of some of the surplus heat already on the ship. It might go to waste anyway. Utilizing his knowledge about rinsing milk via heat for human consumption, Homa got the idea to use the same method for cleaning ballast water. This method is also known as pasteurization. When a liquid containing small algae and bacteria is warmed to around 70 degrees and held there for 60 seconds, all of the bacteria die. This was the missing factor of their system. So the team then included a unit that pasteurized the water going back into the tank, thus cooking all of the microorganisms that had not been killed. At first, many people were skeptical about the idea. They said it could not be done because the ballast tanks consisted of many smaller compartments. How could all of the bubbles get around all of the corners? Homa's instinct told him that the recirculation would function well because bubbles will always move around obstacles in order to resurface. The only way to find out was to test it in a 1 to 10 scale model of a ballast tank. We have been very lucky to get a small corner here in this hall of mechanical technology. The hall here has everything to do with sea and water, and it has been an ideal place for us to perform our tests. What is happening right now is just what happens on a ship when it takes water into the ballast tanks. To test if the bubbles really could reach the distant corners of the tanks, Homa inserted restrictions to challenge the bubbles. This restriction here represents a cover of the hole of 
the other here with a smaller hole represents a restriction of 30%. And inside the tank, we have installed plates with restrictions of 90%. The more restriction we have in the system, the better our system works. An important part of the development phase was to monitor how efficiently the system exterminated the microorganisms in the test tank. Because HOMA moved into new territory, the lab could not use their traditional methods of measurement and consequently came up with some surprising results. It simply did not add up. At one point, HOMA and his team were ready to give up, but then they tried one last idea, to get a second opinion from a new lab. The new lab used another method for analyzing the tests, and luckily, HOMA got the results they expected. While the new lab only showed two surviving microorganisms per cubic meter of water, the first lab showed 2,000. At one point, HOMA went back to the first lab and confronted them with the numbers. They admitted that something was wrong, and later it turned out that HOMA's method of killing the bacteria was not traceable by the traditional methods of analysis in the first lab. There are not many zooplankton that overlever this. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's really strange that you've been so stringent around phytoplankton, Det er sgu zooplankton, der skaber problemer, der fysioplankton skaber ikke problemer. Altså, jeg har ikke hørt invasiv alger endnu. Nej, jeg ved. Men, men, ja, det er også det, det, altså, det er egentlig bare bagsen, ja, at... Ja. Så, men der er jo nogen, der har siddet i nogle udvalg, der sidder og hvis det ja, ja. for, at nu tager vi alle de organismegrupper med, som er relevante, og som ja. man kan faktisk råbe med ja. Og man kunne godt tænke sig, at der lige pludselig er en eller anden algeart, som måske ja, ja. er uheldig. Ja, ja. Det kan man ikke afvise. Nej, 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 det er ikke rigtigt. After HOMA successfully tested the system on a one-tenth scale, the team tried to get on board a smaller vessel to see if the numbers properly translated to a larger scale. Luckily, the experiment followed the exact same curves as the ones in the tank at the Technical University of Denmark. Later, tests showed that their method was also compatible in tanks a hundred times larger. Her er der lige ankommet en tankvogn med vand fra Arsø øh, med ferskvand, fordi det er vigtigt selvfølgelig at teste alt muligt vand, som man kunne tænke at tage ombord på et skib som ballersvand. Et skib kunne jo godt ligge enten ved kaj i Rotterdam og tage saltvand ind, men det kunne også ligge i de amerikanske søer eller i Sortehavet og tage ferskvand ind. Så derfor er det vigtigt, at man tester både for saltvand, brakvand og ferskvand. Hvornår henter du vandet her? I morges? Øh... Ja, lige henter det. Det tager jo ikke mere end en kvarter 20 minutter at køre herud. Er det den første? Eller den, det er nummer to. Det er nummer to, der kommer her. Og vandet ser ud, som om det plejer at gøre i Arnesø. Fuldstændig. Hva? Du har ikke været ude og bade i det i morges? Nej, dog ikke. Dog ikke. <laughs> Så, men jeg kan godt begynde at starte trykket. Ja, gør du bare det. Altså, vi har jo lavet vores egne forsøg på DTU øh, og kunne se, at principperne i vores proces fungerer. Det er det, vi sådan set foretager her og laver testene i fuld målestok og bliver testet på en sådan måde, at IMO også har tillid til, at det er gjort rigtigt. Ud af de 250 kubikmeter, der er i tanken, tager man løbende vand ud, så bliver det skyllet ned i en lille glas, og så tæller man, hvor meget af det, der er levende. Og det er det, der kun må være maksimalt 10 levende organismer per kubikmeter. Nu smager jeg på det derhen. Det smager jo på det her. Fordi du er sådan en gammel kemiker. Ja, ja. Det er vand til, jo, jo. Det er den bedste, bedste test, som vi nu er. Ja, jo, jo, jo. Men... Det er det, det jeg ikke ser på, jeg, jeg vil gøre, men... Du er i det, nu har jeg overlevet så mange år, det er ja, jo, jo, men uanset om det er giftigt eller ej, så... Men altså, det smager udmærket. Det smager, det smager som sødt vand. Ja, ja. Okay. Sweet water. Ja. Så det er... Ja, det er da godt for en dum med hjem, hvis du vil det. But one does not have a product until the system is type approved. 
Only with this in place can they take the ballast treatment system to the market and start contacting customers. Still, word travels fast these days, so they have already been contacted by interested ship owners. But today, you don't use the warm room. No. It's like this ship, that will our system not fill with more than this. That would be fine to get some plastic. So this, as a practical seafarer aboard, what is it generally? If you want to have a system that you think is really good to have, what should such a system be? A simple and easy to use system som bare virker. It isn't so standard, and the math isn't quite so obvious. And especially in the case where they might go on one ship and the configuration of equipment for that ship might be slightly different than the same equipment on a different vessel. And so they're going to have to develop their own algorithm, if you will, to help the the regulatory authorities interpolate that even if the equipment configuration changes slightly, that they can still produce the values in each case that are then the, re the result of those values having been created is the desired biological effect. Homa has been involved in technical development most of his life, and only recently in the development of the rotating jet nozzles for many different uses. One thing that stands clear to him is that in all technical innovation, the most important qualification is to be able to combine different knowledge in new and non-traditional ways. Without knowledge, you cannot invent anything, he says. Homa tells young people who want to be involved in innovation that it is critically important to obtain knowledge so they can apply knowledge to new ideas. And another thing, in all aspects of development, one thing is certain for Homa. You need stamina. One must continue to believe and keep going even though it's tough. If one quits easily, one will never accomplish anything. Men uh, sådan en mand som Picasso for eksempel, han malede jo også glimrende billeder selv, han blev 80. Uh, og du ved, han holdt jo ikke op og sagde, nu er jeg, nu går jeg på pension. Jeg tror, han aldrig vil gå på pension. Homa cannot remember one day he did not get up thinking that this job is as good as it gets. It's about the test we did last week. Sounds good. So both the zooplankton and the phytoplankton figures are okay. Perfect. It's nice to hear. Thank you. You are equipped with a totally hell, and that's really good. This can also be. Yeah. Hell, it's in wide-scale hard work.